Milestar Tires has assembled a group of 11 vehicles and 24 people for a three-day trek across the Cascade Mountains and headed for the Pacific. None of the participants know the exact route, stops, or experiences we'll share, but that's all part of the adventure. I was invited to document the trip by my friends at Torque Masters Industries, one of the sponsors of this event. Other sponsors and partners include All Pro Off-Road, Van Compass, Turtleback Trailers, Adventure Hammock Systems, and Modern Jeeper. This is Expedition 4, the fourth event in a unique adventure series that Milestar Tires has put together. Thank you everybody for joining us. Welcome to Expedition 4, Expedition 4. Um, I know that there's been a lot of, um, let's say, lack of an idea of what you're doing. I appreciate you trusting me and trusting Chris to create a really good route. Um, one of the challenges that uh, we have where we're at is that this year there was record snowpack late in the season. So in April, at the beginning, it was 65% snowpack. By the beginning of May, there was 135% snowpack. So they got a really late storm that dumped a ton of moisture on the Cascades. So that in addition to the wildfires that impacted the Cascades last year, the route planning, we've adjusted it five different times, either because stuff was impassable or routes were closed or the snow was just too deep. The cool part is that you're going to see a lot of central Oregon and then we're going to eventually cross the Cascades and then we're going to reach the coast. We'll do some interesting stuff once we get there. Tonight we'll be camping, um, so it'll be dispersed as well as tomorrow, but tomorrow we'll have facilities. We're gonna convene on radio chains. If anybody doesn't have a radio, we'll put you in between the mid gunner and tail gunner. Huh? What size is she? Can I have you mid gunner? Kelly's gonna be right behind you, so she'll always be right there. Everybody else, just fall in with the other vehicles. We only have 11, so it should be pretty easy. We're gonna head out here and probably cut the left and then take the route through Bend.
20 minutes and we're going to be to a place near Balancing Rock with some very unique natural features that have been there for thousands of years and the rocks are balancing on top of each other. Our stomachs began to tell us it's time to find camp and eat, but the dispersed camping sites near Balanced Rocks on BLM land were not available. So we defaulted to Perry South Campground, right on the waters of Lake Billy Chinook. Tacos from El Sancho were on the menu for dinner, and they were delicious. Deschutes Brewery graciously provided a selection of craft beverages to complement. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So enthusiastic. <laughs> Today is going to be a fun day. Uh, not as coursey, but it will be very contrasting. So we're going to go on one end of the spectrum of terrain to another. That's really all I'm going to leave you with. We'll get back down to Sisters, the city. We'll fill up in Sisters, and then we'll head up the highway, Highway 20. Highway 20 happens to closely mirror, within like a mile or two, the original uh, Santium wagon trail. It was used for over a hundred years to get goods and supplies from the coast to the Central Valley here, over the Cascades. So it'd be really epic. Um, you know, the Cascade Range within Oregon, it spans 260 miles, so the entirety of the state, but it cascades overall. The system goes from Northern California all the way into British Columbia. In, in Oregon, it's about 90 miles uh, wide at its, at its widest. So we're going to be crossing over it, dropping into the Willamette Valley today. More of tarmac today. There's nothing we could do to get around it. Like I said before, the burns and the snowpack will just make it very, very difficult for us to traverse. But there is going to be a lot of opportunity for us to have fun today if you want to, or you can chill today if you want to. We made our way along the Oregon Trail, the Santian Wagon Road. Enjoying the minimal amount of dirt roads that we got to drive on that day, we had no idea the struggle with nature we were about to encounter. We might be able to like pick it up. Yeah, if we got someone, even if we got someone behind Mark with a winch, they could just hold it while Mark drove right, exactly. by there you and go. set it back down. That's actually not a bad idea. So on Trail 845, there's a little bit of a downed tree here. We got some big vans with trailers. They don't quite fit. So we're gonna try to do some winching. Hey Martin, I need to... and some pulling. Get some cutting. And hopefully there. clear this road.
We ended up doing a lot of digging as well, but we were able to get these vans and trailers through. The technical aspect of these downed trees, particularly for those members towing a trailer, did not end at the low bridge. There was another section of downed trees diagonally across the trail, and whoever cleared these logs definitely did not have full-sized rigs with trailers in Good mind. Here. Obstacle conquered. This was the last obstacle on the trail. We ended a large parking area along the side of the highway where everyone aired up tires for the highway drive to the coast. Just as Martin promised, there was plenty of time to play. We'd stayed at Dunes City, Oregon, which is a public area where you can get out in the dunes, on the beach, well, and play after. around in the sand. Around for a little bit, trying to get it out. It's a fantastic restaurant that we're gonna go to. It's on the, it's on the coast. So it's like that, but with food. Um, and we're going to be sitting and dining and watching the waves come in. Um, so it's a fantastic restaurant. Uh, we're going to get there around like 1.45, 2 p.m. Um, and it's a super easy day, but we're going to take that 101 all the way up the coast. So, you know, guys, just try to take it in and enjoy. Did everybody enjoy getting out onto the, yeah. the dirt? Into the sand. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I like this so much to bring a bunch back. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. yeah. just like mementos, right? Yep. We'll get up into Pacific City, and then we'll enjoy. And then there'll be an opportunity if you guys want to stay, like do some more beach stuff. There's an opportunity for some that. Cookies. And then we'll end up in Hillsboro. Oh. So we'll be about 40 minutes, 45 minutes west of Portland. We're going to. 
learn what makes the terrain in the Willamette Valley in Oregon farming so significant from a farmer. He's a good friend of mine. He's got a fantastic winery, um, and we get to camp there today. Sweet. Um, so today's like a super casual day. There's no real wheeling outside of what you guys did this morning. We're about to put together the last leg of this trip. We're headed to uh, a good friend of mine's winery. But before we do that, I want to say thank you to Barry for lunch. Alright, so we're going to head out. It's an hour and like 38 minutes to the next spot. We wound our way from the coast inland to the vineyard we would be staying at tonight. So we're here today at Old 47 Estate, and what's the name behind us? Uh, this is the name of the vineyard, Old 47. Uh, we crush a lot of our fruit from Old 47. We work in hand and with the owners, plus a vineyard management company called Jesse Estate Vineyards, to make the wine that we have here today. This first one here is a really lightweight uh, white wine, it's sparkling. It's 58% Blanc Noir, so that's Pinot Noir done in a white style. 42% Riesling, and it's all 100% estate grown from this surrounding vineyard right here. I can't think of anything in particular that encapsulates a sense of time and place better than grapes and wine in particular, because grapes, especially Pinot Noir, are very expressive. Uh, Pinot has a tendency to express how it was grown, how it was uh, treated in a, a winery. And so with that, Pinot Noir in particular is probably one of the best varietals that you can drink to give an expression of where it came from. I don't think anyone was truly excited to wake up this morning. Aside from it being a beautiful morning, it was also the end of a really incredible adventure and a time among friends experiencing everything that Central Oregon has to offer. With busy schedules and everything going on in the world, it's not easy to pull a group of people this size together from this many areas of the country to spend four days together. Some were old friends, some meeting for the first time, but after this, we're all family.